Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at the Cockcroft Walton Multiplier. So this circuit is used to increase the output voltage massively and includes a couple components that are a bit complex. So what I've done to make it a bit simpler is I've divided all the circuits into individual circuits and we'll add them together at the end to see how it works together. So the first circuit we'll need to know is just a simple rectifier circuit. So in this case we've got a diode and a capacitor and I've used a voltmeter to measure the voltage at the output. So we have an input of 16 volts at a frequency of 1000 kilohertz. So on the positive half cycle, the current will flow like this. And as normal, we'll receive our output voltage of 16 volts on the positive half cycle. However, on the negative half cycle, the diode will become reverse biased and the capacitor will discharge to maintain this level of 16 volts. So let's see the simulation for this. So as you can see, the purple line is the input, which goes from 16 volts to negative 16, and the green line is the output, which is about 15.3 volts, sorry, as we're losing about 0.7 volts over the diode. So that's the first circuit we'll need to know. The second is almost identical, except the capacitor and the diode have been swapped. We can see in this case that if we take the potential here, we'll have 16 volts as expected. However, if we assume that it's the capacitor is in steady state, so that is charged up to 16 volts, then we'll notice that the output voltage will be 32 volts, as we'll just add both voltages together to get 32. So as you can see that this is actually really useful, as we've almost doubled the voltage, we've shifted it up by 16 volts. So you can see the voltage of the capacitor in orange here, and you can see the voltage of the input in green and the output in purple. So you can see that green line has moved up 16 volts in this case to give 32 volts. So if we add these two circuits together, we'll get something like this, where the green again is the input from 16 to negative 16. The purple has been shifted up by 16 due to the capacitor, and the red line shows the output, which is a flat line now due to the rectifier. So we've got the rectifier here and the multiplier here. So if you imagine if we cascaded a multiple of these circuits, we could get a massive output voltage depending on what we use at the input. So let's have a look at how this works. So you can see, as this is a f almost three circuits put together, we'll start again with our input in purple of 16 to negative 16, but you can see the input or the output, sorry, of each circuit is jumped up by a voltage. So let's have a look. So if we look at the voltage across the di of across the capacitor, we'll notice that's about 16 volts. If we have 16 volts in and 16 volts from the capacitor, we'll notice that this green line will have about 32 volts, or just under, again due to the diode drop. This similarly happens for all circuits, so we'll get an R16 and an R16 and an R16 for each stage. So in this case you can see that we've gone from about 16 volts to 132 volts. And if we were to change the input, we could make this massively more. So let's change it. Let's say if the amplitude increases, let's put it up to 100 volts. Or 111. So you can see the voltages all start to increase. It's still rising. So obviously, the bigger capacitors you use, the diodes with a larger voltage range, you'll be able to increase the voltage massively more. So this is a relatively low voltage circuit at 1000 volts, but this could go into the kilovolts, the megavolts, which could be used for any high voltage DC application. So I hope you guys understand the Cockcroft multiplier a bit more now. Thanks for watching.